this is the company that is the software development and specialized development company. It was um, established in the US in 2009, and since then uh, we've been developing mobile web applications. Uh, today there are 250 persons in our company, all of them are in house, no freelance. expected from 
terms of future implementation, actually, how, how much is it, will it be and how long will it take? And also, we uh, try to understand how exactly uh, the client is going to monetize the application. Because anyway, maybe not from the first release, but we should still think it from the very beginning. So how am I going to you know, like make money from this one? Maybe not now, but in the future. That's obviously a question for any business, business member or business-related person. Um, in this case, specific case, we did not charge the client for the uh, feedback, professional feedback or consulting. But I should say that in some cases, it's also very important to uh, make real experiments with probably unknown uh, specifications or unknown products or any means so that we are going to integrate into this product. So, um, in this case, it was not chargeable, but the main case is where this job, where this cooperation uh, can be available for the client. So basically, these are the components that we try to understand uh, as the outcome of the consulting sessions. The next stage is obviously the design, and um, you know, like in some cases, when you say the word design, uh, most people, I say, <laughs> younger people think that this is only about you know, like sexy appearance. And I should say that it's it's not only that. It, it's not that actually. So um, when we take a look at this chart, we do understand that um, the design is the stage where actually the logic and structure is being performed. When we understand how exactly this is going to work in terms of user interface, and as you can see, um, well, it's not that just the cost of the change will be very very high at the design stage, but still, this is the expense that we can avoid just because we clearly understand how this is going to interact with the user. And specifically by a case design resolves this problem and gives the other step. So now I would like to just elaborate a bit what exactly is included into the UI and case design stage. So first of all we are talking about sketches. So um, basically what we are doing uh, having those you know like very very rough uh, screens we don't understand exactly uh, what uh, what exactly this or that screen brings to the client. So what does that client do with this screen? We can press buttons, you can probably log in or register, we can for instance make the payment transactions. And so we understand the basic models, functional models that are going to be in our system. Basically we understand that design is exactly that stage when you understand your target audience and you understand the portraits and it's much more even important when your system is going to involve uh, users of different types. For instance, you can have an ordinary customer, you can have an administrator, you can have, I don't know, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe a boss to see all the reports of it's absolutely different for any kind of project. So we understand the rough logic, how this is going to be. And obviously, um, as I am required paying money for this stage, I should understand what I give as the fact. So when we have the sketching stage, usually the client receives some sort of very rough prototype and understanding of the overall preliminary estimation. After that, we proceed with the wireframing. It's also a very important part of the design, and um, based on those sketches, we try to understand more clearly how the system is going to be uh, built in terms of development. Front-end, back-end part, we understand exactly what devices this product will be compatible with. So uh, basically this is more, much more clarified and optimized sketches. And they try to, you know, like they get much more deeper understanding how the system is going to work. So as a fact, the client also receives prototype with all the interface elements. And we, we understand the logic much more better. I'd say that at this stage, the cost of changes is much higher than at sketches. So every client should understand that after this stage, uh, you know, like it's not feasible to, to actually change something. It's not really bad. And after that, we uh, should take that wireframe, take that prototype, understand what device is going to be compatible with, and to try to brand the product, try to brand those screens. Uh, we fully understand the logic, and we understand uh, how exactly this is going to be implemented. So at this stage, we always try to involve some sort of developer who will just check in terms of from his technical perspective. If the designs are okay, if there will be any changes and implementation. Because again, this is all about money as a 
source files that are ready for the development. Usually they are just slides with easy designs, easy format designs. And you understand exactly how much this is going to cost for you and how long it will take to develop the product. So design is ready. We understand the business side of the product. So we take the project documentation, we take the design, and this is the base for the full and I should say probably finalized uh, scope of implementation for exactly ready for development, for development stage. Um, so first of all, development is about the implementation, obviously about the functionalities, about the features, about the architecture. So first of all, we understand the full estimation. We understand how we're going, how we plan to implement those. We understand how exactly we're going to involve different developers and how exactly they are going towards the tennis on the product. It's also very important when the client has the timeline restrictions. And after that, we obviously as a client we see some result. It's, it's not the ready made uh, product, but still it's the built and uh, the client has the ability to download it and to take a look, to click, to understand the overall logic. There might be some small bugs, but still overall product is very clear in terms of function and engine. So the client can conduct rough uh, review from this side. And after that, when everything is ready in terms of development, we usually involve the engineers. And uh, for big projects, uh, I should say that it's better to involve the engineer for front-end part, for back-end part, and probably one team leader or the person who synchronizes the changes. So testing and polishing is a stage that is dedicated for teaching some small things to understand if the product is actually compatible for all those devices that we identified with the client beforehand. And also, it's very interesting thing is that uh, testing is also more about automation. So when we're talking about the ongoing development or if the client has the plan to uh, constantly improve his product and release more and more versions, it's very important in terms of budget planning to understand how we can automate the process of testing. And uh, I, I should say that probably all the engineers that have some certificates or something like that, like in our company, they do understand how to do that. And uh, just in a small tick, so you can check uh, actually the quality of the skill set of a particular engineer if you ask him about uh, what understanding he or she has about exactly optimization. And after that, the product is ready, you have uh, the understanding how you're going to monetize it, everything is okay for you as a business owner. So you should launch it basically, you should reach the main goal of yours is to actually reduce the product to your end users and receive their feedback, to collect it and analyze it and, and have the understanding how this is going to be improved in the future. So when you have the launch of the first feedback, it's very important to also uh, have the team or maybe you can do it yourself to actually have the tools to collect that feedback. So you understand what exactly is okay with it, what exactly is not that okay. You understand if your vision of the product and its goals, how they correlate with the end user's goals. So you can clearly understand how you want to improve it, how you want to make it better. Maybe in some cases you can even say, okay guys, this is not actually what I was expecting, so let's do everything from scratch. <laughs> but I hope uh, it won't happen with you. So, absolutely, at the end of the launch, the stage to understand how exactly you're going, you're planning to release further versions, maybe add some features, maybe eliminate some features, so it all depends on this. Um, and on, at this stage, I would also really appreciate if uh, we do not, we do not uh, you know, like, skip important things that we should think over beforehand. So this is promotion, this is monetization, this is actually the fact of the user testing, so you should somehow bring it into your users and somehow collect their feedback. You should obviously gather the statistics and understand the feedback. I mean, like for instance, if this is a website, it's very recommended to leave the contact form where any user will be able to place some comments or maybe to make some you know, suggestions for you what's good, what's bad, etc. So it's totally important aspects and we highly recommend to think about them much, much, much more earlier than at the launch stage. So basically, taking into account this particular sample of IMS project, just a sample, we can see how the process was from the very pure idea, from the just the concept of the person from the industry, the real product that was brought to the users, and as I mentioned before, as you can see, this is a story, it's a sort of story of success because uh, we had a lot of further iterations of versions releases after the first one. So uh, this is this is how it actually happened this time. And this is exactly how it's happening usually when the ideas when develop, develop 
these are our clients. So the first option is to have the fixed price. So for instance, you have all the personal documentation, you clearly understand what exactly you are expecting from this product. So you are coming to any software development partner, bring this uh, documentation, and our aim is to actually estimate and freeze the requirements and say, okay, this, this is the budget, this is the timeline, this is the risk mitigation plan. And uh, in this case, it's very important that the client doesn't have a lot of uh, place, a lot of space to control the processes within the team. Uh, because the team should be strictly focused on the development and actually uh, uh, keep the promises of budget and timeline achieved. And there is another approach, is when the idea is very huge. You do not have the full understanding of what, what this is all about, how, what exactly you would like to receive for the first release, for the further releases, when you are not very sure exactly, uh, for instance, what features are important and what which of them are you know, like unclear or unknown at the moment, and just a pure innovation. So in this case, you just go and hire the dedicated team. So we ask you, we verify the directions of the development that you are interested in. We gather the team with the proper skill set and uh, ability to start as soon as possible. And after that, you just uh, plan the product management on, management on your end. So you can assign tasks, you can say uh, which developer uh, actually the prioritization of the tasks for each developer. So you are more into the process of the management of the whole this. Summarizing all together, I would like to say that it's very important not to only have the idea and, you know, like, I know uh, I have my own startup as well, so I clearly understand that when you're a business owner or product owner and you have the idea, it seems like it's the big, you know, like, it's the best one. You're very excited, you want to, you know, like, make a first release with, with, with dozens of features, but still, <laughs> I should, I, probably we should, you know, like just stop and say, we should come to the office of some software development partner, potential, potential one, and just ask questions, have some sort of glorification, and having the feedback, professional feedback from guys who develop it uh, on a daily basis. So, my conclusion and my recommendation would be just to spend your time wisely, in terms of budget, obviously, in terms of timeline, and uh, it's very important to establish the trusting relations between you as a team and development team. Uh, because in this case, it's not more about, you know, like, uh, it's not just like buy selling process, it's just about partnership and uh, sharing the knowledge about the industry, about the idea, about the possibilities, about some uh, improvements in the future. So, this is probably that I wanted to present you today, so I would really uh, welcome your questions or any comments.
much for your attention and please welcome us at stand 827 if you probably would like to have some external and additional discussions.